This is Dr. Epstein. I'm here to present my work on aesthetic eyebrow restoration. Um, I have nothing to disclose. Anyway, there's several roles of the eyebrows versus aesthetic. They define sexuality. Male eyebrows typically flat and heavy. Female eyebrows usually arch, more delicate. Frames the eyes. So they're extremely important, creating a normal appearance. They portray age because with senescence, eyebrows droop. And then finally, functional, it does protect the eyes from forehead sweating, dripping down. And you can see classic example of the, of the male versus the typical female eyebrow. The arch is more lateral with the male. It's a flatter lower border with the appearance of an arch. I'm gonna go into that. So the design, first step is the design of the eyebrows. What I usually do is I draw the lower border first. It's typically a flat line. Then along the upper border, I make a, the appearance of the arch by creating a thicker portion of the brow at the area approximately superior to the lateral limbus. And the length is usually 5.5 to 7 centimeters. So here's a, a couple of examples before and after of transplant. Another example before and after. So you can see how I've marked out with the blue arrow showing where the peak of the, of the blue lines showing where the peak of the arch is. And you see in this case, I brought the eyebrows more medial and here's his after result. Another example, you see how I create that appearance of the arch by having the superior border get wider. The design of the eyebrows with females, first of all, many of my female patients know how they like to design the eyebrows, so I let them do that. And then I come in and then I, you know, I will touch it up and, and uh, make sure that the patient and I are both happy with the results and that we've uh, had symmetry on uh, the female eyebrows, typically a little shorter. And here's a variety of examples before and after uh, a soft, uh, a, a dramatic, but yet a, a not a pointy arch. Uh, still an arch, but but more subtle, um, a little more of an arch. You can see a couple of examples with a little more of a peaked look and then a, a slightly flatter look. These are all before and afters and then a truly flat look before and after. And um, once again, it's a, it's a matter of individual preference for my patients. I explained in pre-op that the goal is the improvement, not perfection. Around 10 to 15% of my patients desire a touch-up procedure, either for more density or adjustment of shape, but the great majority do not require nor desire it. They may continue to want to use some makeup or microblading for a dense look, particularly if they have very light colored skin. There is the potential for reduced regrowth if they've had prior transplant, um, and also I will not transplant FFA. However, for alopecia areata, I have developed a protocol. Patients had a prior tattoo, usually I try to follow those tattoos. In this case, it was impossible or it would be ill-advised to go ahead and follow this high arch. So I will basically create what I think is, is a nice look as close to the, the position of the prior tattoo as possible. With the making of the recipient sites, I typically will use a 0.5 millimeter blade. Rarely, I should say, I use a 0.6 millimeter. I'll stay as flat to the skin as possible. The incisions are made sagittally. 250 to 400 grafts per eyebrow, and I mostly use two hair grafts. And here you can see the making of the recipient sites to create a crosshatch pattern. The lower border is, is, is up and out. The upper border is down and out. Medially, in the head, it's mostly vertical. And I will make the very top row along the medial heads horizontal as well to sort of to nicely frame them. Uh, the occasional patient, you need to uh, vary the direction that uh, would normally be made for the recipient sites. And here's an example how the hairs grow primarily vertically. And then to plant the grafts, as I said, I'm mostly using two hair grafts and we use the implanter pens and you can see the before and the after result in a typical case. So these are self-loading implanters. We use a two-person system to um, create efficiency. With the graft management, we trim the cuff of the skin, but you don't want to skeletonize the graft. With, uh, with FUE, there's commonly three hair grafts. In most cases, we will discard the one hair graft and leave as much supportive tissue with the two hair grafts. However, if we need more single hair grafts, we'll go ahead and just and, and dissect the one and the two hair graft, the, the one and the two hairs, divide them. Uh, so we have a little more uh, density around the single hair graft, a little more connect, uh, supportive tissue, and the two will be a little thinner. We harvest extra grafts so we can choose the best, and you have to choose the locations. Priorities include a, ideally a slight curl, least likely to turn gray, um, density. Those are all the factors you take in terms of determining the donor area. To assure symmetry in the desired look, we'd like to do bupivacaine pretty early. This way we don't have to keep on injecting, which can distort due to prolonged repeated anesthesia injections. 
what we basically do is I make all the initial recipient sites, maybe 250, 275, fill them. Then we'll sit the patient up. Before they look at it, I'll make adjustments. Then I let the patient sit up and see the eyebrows to get his or her input. And uh, the so important to maintain the original markings. Postoperatively, drive precautions for five days. Most patients are presentable at four days, uh, actually looking quite good. Uh, with any redness, we besides a couple of days of antibox, we can put them on Benadryl. And post long-term, patients need to plan on trimming the hairs over seven to 10 days. Most patients do not require uh, the training of the hairs. They'll lay, they should lay flat. This is my very first eyebrow transplant in 1996. I used mostly single head grafts, and here it is, my 14th hundredth or so transplant. Uh, and this was done with mostly two and three hair grafts. And I'm going to explain to you uh, my approach on whether you use single versus multi hair grafts. The advantage of single hair grafts, it helps make naturalness easier to achieve and it's easier to place into smaller recipient sites. Two and three hair grafts, however, maximize density. Basically, for every graft you're placing, you're getting two or three hairs as opposed to one hair. Of course, we'll only use single hair grafts in the medial head and the distal tail. Two hair grafts are used all along the border, and if we're going to use three hair grafts, we'll use um, those in the central most portion. This was a case of an example, all single hair grafts, certainly a beautiful result, but I think she could have achieved better densities, such as what we achieve when we use a mixture of one, two, and three hair grafts, or basically the multi-hair graft approach. With Asian hair, I almost exclusively use all single hair grafts. However, I did some two hair grafts in certain parts of the eyebrow to create a, a fuller look. This was all achieved with primarily two and three hair grafts. You can see the before and the after. And another example of mostly two and three hair grafts. With Afro curly hair, I mostly use single hair grafts unless both hairs are growing in the same direction. I will use some two hair grafts like I did with this patient, but I'll always compromise density with my African or my black patients uh, in, in favor of naturalness. But anyway, to answer the question, do single and multi hair grafts produce superior results? I did a study, we planned for 15 patients. We informed consent we, those, for those patients seeking bilateral uh, eyebrow transplantation. Any patient with eyebrow scarring prior transplanting uh, was excluded. If they had prior microblading, that was fine. Uh, mostly I used 0.5 millimeter recipient sites. Grafts were mostly obtained by FUE, but, occasion, but a few patients had the grafts obtained by FUT. And I offered the patients a small discount as well as a touch-up procedure um, at no charge. And we wound up in, uh, enrolling eight subjects, uh, all women, various ethnicities. And basically the approach was to do one eyebrow, all single hairs, and the opposite eyebrow, according to my traditional approach, which is mostly two and three hair graft. Follow up at eight to 10 months, and both the patient's and blinded observer evaluation was utilized. Anyway, the results at eight months, the study was prematurely terminated prior to the full enrollment. Decision was made because of this clear superiority of outcomes on the multi hair side in the first eight patients by both self assessment as well as observer evaluation. And the mean number of hairs placed in the single hair side was 307, which is 307 grafts. Meanwhile, the mean number of hairs placed in the multi hair side was 291, close, the amount of grass rather was close to the same amount, 291, but approximately 580 hairs, so almost twice as many hairs. And you can see before and after, um, in this case, one side was multi-haired, the other side single-haired, definitely fuller look. And this is a more impressive difference, the multi-haired graph side, so that's before and after. And you can see on the right, well, your left side, the multi-haired graph side is fuller. So we did self-assessment scores, single hair is blue, multi-hair is, is uh, orange. You can see we assess for density, naturalness and overall aesthetic result. And you can see a higher score for the multi-hair graph by patient assessment. And then by blinded observer, this was even more significant, the difference. The overall aesthetic result was definitely better with multi-hair graph. That's it's shown in blue versus green as single hair graph. My conclusion, multi-hair graphs yielded superior results in terms of density, naturalness, and overall aesthetic result. Superior results rely on the ability to place multi-hair graphs in the same sized recipient sites, 0.5 millimeters, as one hair graphs to permit the same number of grafts, but twice the number of hairs in each brow. And there's a higher overall assessment score differential between natural, between, um, uh, between uh, single side versus multi-hair side. This difference was greater by third party observer than by uh, self-patient uh, assessment. And that probably reflects an enhanced ability by the experienced technicians or the assistants 
to appreciate excellent results, as well, or possibly a bias conveyed by the author to his assistants who did the evaluating as to what he considers successful results. And then finally, ultimately the surgeon must make a myriad of decisions as to how to achieve the best results in his or her hands and with each specific patient. And this includes taking into account hair color and curl, ethnicity, and patient goals. Thank you.